All right, so right now I have an application, right? This is my application, student management. Right now this application is going to connect to a database. So where is that database? You might be wondering, hey Vilash, show me that database. Where do you have that? Okay, this is a new step. And in this step, we are going to configure our data. I mean, I'm sorry. We are going to configure our database, okay? So here is my MySQL database. So I'm going to click on local instance 3306, whatever the default instance that I have. Well, mm, you know, uh, this is th my, my theme is dark. Okay. So you can see a dark editor here, but if you're using a light version, this is going to look different. Okay. So this is, this is MySQL. You can see MySQL workbench. So right now here in this workbench, I am going to go to schemas. So I have a schema here called Selenium Express. So in this schema, uh, my intention and my goal here is to create a table. Okay, I'll be creating a table where basically I'll be storing my data. I told you, right? I'm an instructor. I have several students and I want to store their data in a table. Okay, and that table I'm going to create here. So let me create the table. Let me say create table. And I'm going to give the table name here as students. Okay. And remember that whenever you are creating a database or skip, I mean, whenever you are creating a table name, make sure the table name is going to be plural. Okay. That's the best practice. I'm not going to say student. I'm going to say students, right? So yeah, basic thing, but I think it is important to repeat. Okay. So now let me create few columns here. I'll say ID and um, uh, the ID is going to be integer and it's going to be the primary key. The next one is going to be, I also want to store my student's name and the name is going to be Vachar. And obviously the name cannot be null. So let me say not null. Let me also select not null here. And also the next one, maybe I will store mobile. Okay, and the mobile is going to be uh, integer so maybe I can go for integer or big int. Mobile is going to be 10 digits. Let me go for big int just right here. Are you guys saying big int? So let me write big int. Yeah, let me go with that. And obviously let me let me give a default value as 12 or the maximum value as 12. Maybe the mobile number is going to be go up to 10 numbers, but let me uh, give 12 here just to be in the safer side so that my DB will not throw me any error. So the next one is the country and obviously it's going to be Vashar again and there you go. That's what I need. So ID is going to be the primary key name mobile country. Uh, mobile is big end uh, and the name and country is Vashar. Perfect. I'm happy with it. Let me click on apply and this is the table it is going to create the students table. This is the query and I have four columns just right here. Okay. The primary key is obviously the ID. Okay. Uh, let me click on apply. Uh, let me click on close. The table has been created and let me say close and let me, um, let me rephrase this and let me open up this and I do have my student table. Now let me click on this icon here and boom, I got something just right here. Okay. But there is no data. The night version of the dark theme is looking a little bad, isn't it? Okay. I'm, I will change it to maybe a light theme tomorrow, but today, please, you know, be here with me. So obviously in my student table right now, there is no data. So let me insert few data. Let me say one, the name. Can I remember some of my subscribers name? Uh, I remember one name, Sudhir. Okay. Let's say Sudhir mobile number <laughs> is something. So Sudhir basically uh, comments in, in, uh, lot of my recent videos. So I remember his name. So if you are hearing this, hi. So let's say this is Sudhir's mobile number and the country is, let's say India. Okay. And the next one, who is the next one that I do remember Priya. I remember this name Priya. She commented in a lot of my recent videos. So I do remember her name as well. So let me give a random mobile number. And let me say the country as US. Okay. And the third one. Okay. Anybody whom I spoke to 
recently uh let me say yeah justin okay and let's say let me give a you know random mobile number just right here and let me say uk okay and one more i'll go with uh anybody i do remember mm, jasmine yeah i i do see this name a lot jasmine okay and i'll give a temporary mobile number and i'll say again india okay so for students pretty much enough let me click on apply so it will generate all the in short queries and all the data are just right here okay so let me click on apply and close okay so now my table do does have all this data so if i'll select this if i click on this yellow bolt here you can see i have four number of students okay cool so right now i got this student in my database so the next job here for me is uh, so i'll go back to my spring app where is my spring app this is my sql uh, this is this is my my sql workbench this is my eclipse so in my eclipse right now i want to write some code and that code is going to connect to that database and all the students that i have inside that database i have some dummy students here i need to fetch those students record and i want to show them just right here on your screen right now i want to build a web page where i want to show those students that i have created on the database so my application need to talk to my sql and it need to and it needs to talk to that table called students and it need to fetch all the data from that table okay and we have to do that using spring jdbc you can do the uh, you can do that by using hibernate you can use some other uh, you know orm tool but here i'm going to keep things simple and i'm going to use spring jdbc because you know about it so so before i code something i hate coding things without planning so let me go back to my you know notepad which is brackets and here i'm going to plan out the things so right now um, the goal here is build a web page to display the students, right? And these students um, will be paged from the DB, okay? So right now, how to build it? How to build it? First of all, you will be saying that here, Vilash, it's pretty simple. Now create a controller, okay? We'll create a controller. So what is the name will be give to our controller? Let's say student controller or something okay we'll create a controller just right here now this controller will return a web page obviously the controller will return a view and for this we'll say um or design a view and the view is going to be what let's say student list dot jsp okay so we have a controller we have a view and what is the next thing Obviously, to make this thing work, the first thing is that we will be needing a dispatcher servlet. I hope you remember how to configure a dispatcher servlet. So we have to configure a dispatcher servlet. Basically, this is the primary uh, step. Okay, these are two things we have to do first. So the first step is going to be uh, configure uh, dispatcher servlet. Okay, and the second thing is create a configuration file okay because if you remember the configuration file inside the configuration file will be uh, you know putting our beams different types of configuration that we are going to have for our application all the beams will be creating here inside the configuration file and we will be giving that configuration file to the dispatcher servlet so when dispatcher servlet will be initialized it is going to read that configuration file and it is going to see okay these are the things the developer want me to create or configure so it will be um, you know configure all those things for us and it is going to boot up our application or it is going to start our application and then we can create a controller we can create view and we can return that view to or to the to the normal user or the user who is going to visit our website okay so right now i'm the visitor or i'm the user of my website i'm the developer i'm the client i'm the instructor and and yeah that, that's pretty much <laughs> okay so right now uh, and i i'm 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 your fan as well okay because you're watching my video so i'm surely your fan okay so thank you very much for watching uh, this particular video especially
So right now, the next thing is, you must be wondering, right? This guy is talking a lot. Yeah, basically I'll make you bore. I'll talk a lot in this particular video. And if you are really hating this, then sorry, you have to be here with me. I, I do talk a lot. <laughs> so right now, let me go ahead and let me start building my web page, my controller, and let me configure my dispatcher servlet. And also let me create a configuration file and let me pull pull all these things together. Let me, let me do all these things and I'm surely excited. So see you in the next step. All right, so let's get started with our development process. And as I said, the step number one is to create the controller. Okay, so let me go ahead and create a controller, but where I'll be creating my controller. I should have a folder first called source main Java and I do not have one. So I have to create it manually, mab and bug. That's okay. I'm going to fix it manually. So I'm going to go to a source um, a show in. I'll go to system explorer and I'll go to student management project and I'll go to source main and here I have resources and web app. So I'll create another folder here called Java, enter it, go back to your project, do a right click, and you can do a refresh. Where is that refresh? There you go. So I'll get source main Java right now, okay? So here inside this particular project, oh sorry, inside this particular folder, I'm gonna create my class. And this is going to be my controller class, right? So I'll create a class class next the class name is going to be um, controller student controller okay and I'm going to put it inside a package called com dot um, selenium express dot um, let's say it's student management project right let me let me say sm as an abbreviation let me say sm as student management and I'll say dot controllers Okay, so I'll keep all my controllers here inside this particular package called controllers. So I'll do finish. So I'll have my class here called student controller. Let me zoom this in and there you go. Okay, it's inside com.selenium.express.sm.controllers package. So first of all, I'll make sure to make it a controller. So I'll write it controller here, control space, controller, where are you? Yeah, there you go. So this controller will come from this package called org.springframework.stereotype.controller. All right, so this is my controller. And inside my controller, I'll have a simple method, public string, so a student um, page or something. So a student list maybe, okay? Uh, because you know, this particular method is going to display a web page. And that web page, in that web page, what I'm going to do, I'm going to show all the students that I have entered just right here. All these students will be displayed to the user with a with a kind of web page which is having a list of student. Okay, so right now that thing I'm going to do here. So it is going to return a web page. That web page name is going to be let's say student list. So this is the view name. I'm going to create this view, and obviously I'm going to I'm I'm going to mark it as get mapping. You can say request mapping, but I'm you can you can say request mapping just right here, and you can say um, the value for this request mapping is going to be slash show student, okay, or show student list or show student page, um, and the method for this you can say you can do a comma and a method. You can say the method is going to be uh, get, isn't it? So I can go for a get method, okay? But instead of doing all this drama, okay? Uh, request mapping, value equal to this, method equal to this, instead of saying this, I can simply say get mapping because obviously this is going to be a get method because when somebody is going to hit this URL, let me create a URL first. Let me say the URL name is going to be uh, show student uh, page maybe, okay? Uh, yeah, show student, let me say show, show students or so student, okay? Uh, this is going to sound good. And uh, the method name, let me change it to so student, uh, so student list, okay? Something just something just like this, okay? So right now this is going to be a get method. So whenever somebody is going to hit this URL, 
we are going to show him this particular page student list so let me copy this student list this particular name let me go back to my eclipse let me go to my source main web of web nf let me create a web page just right here but i'll be create a new folder here where where i'll be basically keeping all my you know web pages or all my view so i'll be create a new folder here called view and inside this particular view i'll be creating this particular page called student list so let me copy that again go there right click new and i'll be create a jsp file so the jsp page name is going to be student list jsp enter okay so i got a you know jsp file just right here so let me not code anything right now i can just give something let's say i and i can say that student data coming soon okay say so stay tuned if you want to see this um how the student data is going to come because we are going to code that out okay so right now our um our page is ready the page is index.jsp i want to create this particular page just right here sorry sorry the page name is student list.jsp index.jsp is basically created by maven isn't it let me delete this particular file i really don't want it okay so student list is the one this is the page that i have created right now and inside student controller when somebody is going to hit this url it is going to show this particular web page and this web page is this one the one that i have created right now so right now my controller is ready my jsp file is ready so right now i just can hit this url called slash show student and it is going to show me this particular page but as i said this is not going to happen because whenever you are going to hit this url there is somebody there there should be somebody or someone who is going to handle this request so first whenever somebody is going to hit this request when a user is going to hit this request the flow will go to where the flow will go to dispatcher servlet okay so we have to create a dispatcher servlet so how to create a dispatcher servlet so to create a dispatcher servlet i can again go here and i can go to new and i can go to class what is class so i can click on other i want to create a new class and in this class i'll be creating a dispatcher servlet so I'll, dispatcher servlet basically help me to initialize my application or boot up my application okay so i'll say student app initializer okay this is going to be my dispatcher servlet name and i'm going to keep this particular dispatcher servlet inside a package called config okay so this is going to be my you know package name and uh, the dispatcher servlet i told you right in your spring mbc intermediate course I basically told you how to create dispatcher servlet, how to configure dispatcher servlet, how to create it by using XML, how to create it by using Java code. So right now, I have I have told you two different approaches to create a dispatcher servlet. I'm going to follow the easiest approach just right now. Okay, so I am going to extend uh, to a class, and I'm I'm actually not remembering that class name. Maybe that is abstract annotation config dispatcher servlet initializer yeah i do remember that the class name is okay not an interface i'll make sure this particular class just right here is going to have a super class called abstract annotation config dispatcher servlet initializer this is the class i need to extend and i'll say finish so i'll have a class here this is the class automatically generated by a spring the class name is going to be student app initializer and this is basically extending to this particular class called abstract annotation config dispatcher servlet initializer why basically i'm extending to this because this class is going to help me to create the dispatcher servlet and trust me if you have taken my spring mbc intermediate course and if you forget it then i'm going to kill you just joking if you forgot it then please go and devise the concept but this is how we basically create the dispatcher servlet okay so right now so i have three methods here to override isn't it so what are the things we need uh, right now to initialize our dispatcher servlet first of all we need to tell our dispatcher servlet which kind of request it is going to handle right the request mapping or the uh, 
uh, request URL or the URL mapping for the dispatcher servlet. And obviously for that, I'm going to use the third method, which is say, uh, which basically is the get servlet mappings. Okay. So I need to give her, I, I need to give this particular guy the mappings for my application that I want this particular dispatcher servlet to handle. And for that, obviously it is going to um, return a string array. So I can create a string array. So I can say string um, array um, mappings, okay? Or I can say app mappings. I can say app mappings and I can create a uh, string array just right here. So I'll be, um, I'll be, I'll be having right now only one mapping. I'll tell my dispatcher servlet, hey, go ahead and handle any kind of URL starting from slash anything is there, try to handle it. You can say here, myapp.com. So only handle those URLs, which starts from myapp.com, but I'll say, hey, just try to handle every URL. Um, that's why I'm going to say slash, okay? And right now, I can basically return this particular mapping just right here, and you are done, okay? So this is how I'm telling my dispatcher servlet which particular URL to handle, okay? In our case, go ahead and handle every URL, okay? So the next thing, okay, before I go ahead, guys, can you tell me why they are returning a string array right here? Because here we can we can basically tell this dispatcher servlet that what is the kind of URLs that you are going to handle? We can say, hey, go ahead and handle this URL, myapp.com. Also, I'll do a comma, also handle this URL slash my um, my another app.com. So every URL which is going to start from my app.com or my another app.com, go ahead and handle those URLs. Okay. But right now I do have only a simple requirement. So here I'm saying, hey, just handle this URL. Okay. So for me, I'm just having one requirement, one URL requirement, one URL, I want to map it to this particular dispatcher servlet. But for you, if you want to customize it, you can actually do it just right here inside this mappings. Okay, I hope so you remember it. Guys, as I, as I told you, if you have taken my Spring MBC Intermediate course, you have, you have, you should have wasted a lot of lot of your time reading that particular course. That's a heavy course, and I really recommend that particular course to everyone. So, if if you are new to my channel and if you are just right here, uh, let me tell you that I do have a course here on YouTube called Spring MBC Intermediate that is going to give you in depth information of Spring MBC. So, in that course, I have completed all these things very deeply. So, if you if you are not sure about it go there and check it out okay you don't have to pay me anything okay that's available for free go there and check it out please okay and if you also if you do not know how to create this guy this this dispatcher servlet i really think you have to watch that okay but okay so let's forget about that i will assume that you know about how to create a dispatcher servlet okay so right now we are done with our servlet mapping so next thing so right now to initialize the dispatcher servlet, when the initial when when the dispatcher servlet will be initialized, you know that it is going to look for a file. What kind of file is that? That's the configuration file, isn't it? So when the dispatcher servlet initialize, it is going to look for a file or a configuration file, a Spring configuration file where basically we'll be activating our component scanning. We'll be telling our dispatcher servlet that hey, whenever you are starting. Uh, the application context or the web application context that you will be creating inside that application context, please manage these beans, okay? So right now, for an example, we have our controllers just right here. Where is that? Okay, we have our controllers here. Where is that controller? Our controller is here inside the controllers package. So we want our dispatcher servlet to create a container or to create a spring container, what we say, a web application context. And inside that con container, you should have instances for our controllers, isn't it? Or any beans that I want my Spring application to manage. And to do that, obviously, inside the config file, I'll be creating a new class, okay? And in that class, I'll be saying, I'll be passing the same information to Spring. So I'll be creating a new class just right now. This is going to be my configuration class. So I'll say my app config. Okay, 
dot uh, am I of config? Let me say that. So, or I can say student of config. Why am I saying my of config? I'll say student, uh, student of config. Okay, perfect. I'll do finish. So this is the class is going to be my configuration class. Sorry, this class is going to be my configuration class. Okay, so I'll activate it by using the add configuration annotation. Okay, so next thing I'm going to create a web MVC application. So I want to make sure that okay, all the MVC features are activated. So I'll say uh, enable web MVC. Where is that? Okay, perfect. There you go. Okay, I want to enable this feature. And also I want to tell my dispatcher servlet, okay, that what are the beans it need to create. So maybe you are thinking how this particular file is going to relate it to the dispatcher servlet. I told you, right, when my dispatcher servlet is going to initialize, this is my dispatcher servlet, right? When it is going to initialize, it is going to look for a configuration file. And that is the file that I'm creating just right here, student app config, this file, okay? So the way I can, uh, the way I can link it just right here by using this particular method, get servlet config classes. So what I can do, basically first let me load that particular class. So I'll say, okay, this is returning uh, a class array because we can have multiple configuration file for our application. In that case, we have only one. The file name is student app config. So let me return that. So I'll say class, okay. And let me say class config files is equal to, obviously this is going to be an array. So I'll say, oh, what are the config files that we have? So the one I have here, student app config dot class. Sorry, student app config dot class. That's it. If you have another one, you can just write here abc dot class. Okay. Uh, that's pretty fine. But I have only one just right here. Okay. So right now this config files, I have to return it just right here. Okay. So right now when my dispatcher servlet will boot up, Whenever this guy object will be created, it is going to create a dispatcher servlet for me. And that dispatcher servlet is going to look here inside the student app config. And here I'm going to tell my dispatcher servlet what are the beans it needs to create, what are the object it needs to create. Okay. So for that, first of the first thing is here to activate the component scanning. Okay. I'll tell my dispatcher servlet that hey, go ahead and scan which packages. Okay. I want to scan for and this package, first of all, where is that? This controllers package, okay? I want my controllers to be instantiated. So let me uh, specify the best packages here. Best packages, and I can specify all my packages just right here. For, for right now, let me use a sub uh, directory. You can basically go to your student controller. You can copy this particular package, and you can you can close this right now. You can say save and you can go to here and you can basically say your package name just right here. But for now, for now, I'm going to use a sub package. I want all my package to get scanned by Spring. So I'll just use a shortcut here. I'll say com.seleniumexpress. So I'll make sure that whenever I'll be creating any, um, you know, whenever I'll be creating any folders or packages, I'll make sure to start it with Selenium Express or com.selenium Express. So those packages will be scanned by Spring. Okay. So right now this is ready. So component scanning will happen. Now when the component scanning will happen, it is going to look for this particular packages. So I have a pack, um, I have a package here called com.selenium Express.controllers. So right now this particular class will be initialized by Spring. Okay. So obviously, you know, inside my spring container, which is web application context, I have an object of student student controller will be available inside that particular container, which will be created by the dispatcher servlet. So uh, that's cool. So right now, let me see. Uh, let me uh, close all these particular files. Now I think I'm all set. Let me save everything. So I have all these particular files just right now. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to go to student management. I'll do right click, I'll do run as, and I'll run it on server. And let's see whether I'm done with my, uh, you know, uh, the first task or not. So basically my intention here is that I should initialize my dispatcher servlet. And obviously you can see the dispatcher servlet uh, initializing the dispatcher 
and the dispatcher servlet is initialized in 900 milliseconds so the first work is done so the next thing i want to make sure that the controller object is getting created or not because you know whenever the dispatcher servlet whenever this guy will be initializing it is going to scan for the it is going to look for this particular package called student app config here we are saying component scanning so it will go to uh, all the packages it is going to scan all the packages so we have one package here called controllers so it will go here and it, it, it is going to look for this particular controller and as we have a add controller annotation it is going to initialize this particular controller so right now i'm going to tag this particular url mapping i'll go to uh, the you know web page i'm going to say control v and i want to do enter uh, let's see what is going to happen but what the what the heck what the heck we are we are not getting our web page right now there is something PC and we have to catch it why our web page is not uh, not why we're not showing our JSP page so in inside this controller whenever I'm going to hear this URL this URL is this one and here whenever this url will be fired obviously this is the method which will be get called and obviously um, i should be getting the student list and student list obviously i have a page here called student list inside src main web app view i have a student list and i should have see this particular page called student data coming soon but i have not seen anything okay so this page is not loading maybe because we are missing something and that is what called a view resolver we have to set up a view resolver. I told you why we need a view resolver. The view resolver is going to resolve this particular view for me. So right now the controller is returning this guy, student list. But where this particular student list is located, we have to tell our spring to look inside a folder called view. Okay, so we have to explain that to spring and we have to go back to the configuration file and right here right now i'm going to say that to spring hey spring uh, create me an object for a view resolver so view resolver this is a method i'm going to create and uh, for this view resolver right now i will um, i'll use a view resolver which is already available inside spring and that is called a internal resource uh, view resolver okay i'll use this guy let me minimize this i'll make i'll say it's public internal resource view resolver so now let me create the object of internal resource view resolver so i'll say internal resource view resolver um and view resolver is equal to new oh where is that new internal resource view resolver okay so right now this is going to be um the object i'll be creating for view resolver and i'll be returning the view resolver right now okay so now the error is gone obviously this is a bean so i'm going to make sure it is going to be a bean for me and obviously the view resolver i want to tell my view resolver to resolve the view so where is basically i am having all my view so the prefix for this is going to be where it basically I'm, you know, having all my view. So I'm putting all my view just right here inside the view folder. And the view folder is inside the WebINF. Okay. So inside the WebINF view, I have this particular JSP page. So I'll say here, uh, look there inside the web um, INF slash, oops, slash view. And look, look inside this particular folder. And inside this folder, there should be something that the the files with with the files whatever the controller is returning with that please add a suffix okay and the suffix for this is going to be dot jsp okay i don't want to explain more about view resolver because i assume that you guys know about it if you don't again go back to the spring mbc intermediate course and maybe in the spring mbc basic course and see how a view resolver works so cool so i have created a view resolver right now and my uh, inner server is also reloaded the changes so i'll go here and i will do enter again and boom we got a web page the student data is coming soon and this particular url is basically what we are created here inside our controller our controller is returning this particular web page so with this uh, page right now a prefix and a suffix got added 
uh, obviously the prefix and suffix got added and after that we uh, the spring can able to locate this particular web page which is just right here okay so if uh, you want to make sure you can also give a h1 here and you can say selenium express and you can align this to center okay so right now let me go there and let me refresh the page boom we got our web page ready right now student data coming soon let's go ahead let's get the student data and where from the student data will come okay we get into the spring or the the mbc world of spring we just need to get out of that right now we have to uh, connect our application to the database and we need to face the data from the database so we need to go into the database world of spring okay so we need to talk database so this data will be getting from our database so this data will be loading it just right here in this web page so an exciting thing is coming soon but before that you go ahead and get your workspace ready and uh, get your basic stuff done okay so i'll see you in the next step Thank you.